Hi everyone, welcome to True Crime Chat with Mommy Ramblings. I'm Carolyn, and if you've never been to our channel before, welcome. And I hope that you can click the subscribe button, click the notifications bell. You'll hear more cases like this. We have a lot of playlists. We cover a lot of true crime, but we also cover a lot of other things because, come on, let's face it, you can't live by true crime alone. So we have all kinds of content like crafts, even live craft panels, and DIYs, construction updates, videos, travel videos, cute puppy and dog videos, all kinds of stuff. Shopping hauls, the list goes on and on. Everything's arranged in playlists so you can easily find what you're looking for. But today we're going to look at this case of Gabrielle Brittany Ulaki from Nevada. She was 16 years old and she was brutally murdered by someone she thought of as her big brother. Now we brought you this case initially in a couple of our live broadcasts, which we have nearly every evening. And those are chock full of a lot of things, but we did bring this case in. And then because I wanted to make its own video, there was an update with the initial case two days ago. And during that video, I got a lot of questions about how did this big brother get arrested? What tied him to this? And so at that time, it was so new that there was not a lot of information out. But that's why I'm back again to give the updates to this. So we're going to hear how her big brother, who is Bryce Dickey, how how he was connected to this, okay? How, how investigators knew that he was connected to this, and allegedly, and how he was arrested, and what's going on now. We're going to hear, we heard her father speak out last time. We're going to listen to the words that her, you know, I'm going to tell you what her mother's saying now and some other interesting facts in this this horrible case with poor Brittany losing her life for this like far too many others are through violent crime it's really gotta stop and I do want to say another thing I know we had discussed that the current state of our world and everything that we're dealing with being afraid that there was going to be more violent crime well I was reading something today that said that one state has seen a significant increase in child abuse cases, even those that the children are dying, which is sad because we're seeing so much of that and they think it may be due to this, that what's going on, this um, self-isolating, being cut off from, you know, a lot of the things people are normally used to, having kids that are home from school where they used to be out for school, having parents that are in financial issues and all of that. So yes, a really real thing. So if any of you feel that way, you feel you can't handle it, call someone before you do something, you know, you'll regret for the rest of your life. Okay, so let's get into Gabrielle Brittany Yulaki. And we explained before she was born Gabrielle Lynn Yulaki, but Brittany just seemed to fit her better when they got her home from the hospital, so she does go by the name Brittany. Quick recap that Brittany was 16 and Bryce 18. They had met at the rodeo. Okay, and she thought of him as her big brother. Deputies were called at about 8.45 p.m. on March 8th regarding a report of a possible missing or runaway girl. Now, their initial investigation led to a phone conversation with Bryce Dickey. Bryce told investigators that he had picked Brittany up at Angel Park in Elko and that they drove around. He said she wanted to be dropped off at Spring Creek High School to meet a friend, so he drove her there at about 4.30 p.m. and saw her walk over to a green Ford F-150 pickup truck that was in the parking lot. 
Bryce also told them that after that, he drove to the Maverick on Boyd Kennedy Road, and he saw that green pickup drive away from the school. After the initial investigation, a decision was made not to make a formal missing persons report, according to the detective. Less than an hour after deputies were dispatched, they requested Brittany's cell phone be pinged, and it showed no current activity and showed her last activity was at 5.22 p.m. in the Boyd Kennedy area. A second deputy spoke with Bryce a short time later while he was out searching for Brit Brittany. The following morning, a deputy took a formal missing person runaway report and entered it with the National Crime Information Center. In subsequent interviews, Bryce said he had driven around with Brittany for about three and a half hours before taking her to Spring Creek High School. He also provided further details about the green pickup, including that it was a late model around the early 2000s he said it was a sidestep model, and then it had a toolbox across the back and two stickers on the rear, on the excuse me, on the left rear window. He also showed deputies Snapchat text messages he had sent to Brittany, asking if she was okay and where she was. They asked if he had ever been in a sexual relationship with her, and he said he had not. For days, investigators searched for the truck and the mysterious driver. See, Bryce had said there was a tall male in his late teens, early 20s, wearing a cowboy hat that was driving the truck that Brittany got into. And these investigators searched for this truck and this mystery driver. Turns out they didn't even exist. On March 11th, a female body was found at about 1.50 p.m. in the Burner Basin. The body was partially clothed and partially covered by a tarp. A condom wrapper was found in the road, along with keys on a lanyard with the name Brittany on it. After the body was positively identified as Brittany Ulaki on March 13th, Investigators interviewed Bryce Dickey again at the Elko Police Department. And some of his statements seemed to contradict his earlier statements. Dickey agreed to give them a DNA sample. During a second search of the crime scene on March 14th, a set of earbuds were found and these earbuds match the earbuds, they were Apple earbuds, they match the, the earbuds that Brittany was wearing in a Snapchat photo on that day that she went missing. There was also a used condom found. Now the DNA on the condom tested positive for both Brittany and for Bryce. In addition to that, there were surveillance video collected that showed Brittany had walked to Angel Park in Elko where she was picked up at 3.22 p.m. That's much later than the 1.30 that Bryce had initially told investigators. He said he had picked her up at around 1.30 p.m. And he said he picked her up in his Chevy pickup. Other video from near Spring Creek High School also contradicted Bryce's statements. Now, this is the area where Brittany was found. You can see Angel Park. That's where he claims he picked her up, Burner Basin, and then the Spring Creek High School where he said he dropped her off. During an interview on March 19th at the Elko County Sheriff's Office, Bryce was confronted with evidence associated with the investigation and reportedly admitted to investigators that he had engaged in sexual contact with Brittany with the use of a condom on March 8th. Bryce was arrested and search warrants were served on residences associated with him. And blood was found on a pair of boots and a sweatshirt 
detectives reported. Bryce is being held without bail at the Alco County Jail. His first court appearance was Friday. District Attorney Tyler Ingram has reserved the option of seeking the death penalty if Bryce Dickey is convicted, which will require the appointment of a special death qualified counsel before his court hearing. So let's just go over what, again, the discrepancies were in his interviews that, you know, let detectives know, hey, this guy has got something to do with this. So Bryce first told detectives that he and Brittany were together, driving around for about three and a half hours before she went missing that afternoon, and that he dropped her off at the school around 4.30 p.m. He told investigators that before he left, he saw Brittany get into that green truck with a pretty tall man wearing a cowboy hat. He told them that the man was a new friend, is how he described him. Bryce said he thought the truck was an older model. He said from the early 2000s, and that it was a step-side model with Nevada plates. He even remembered seeing a toolbox in the back of the truck and some stickers on the back window. Now, seasoned investigators who interviewed Bryce several times found the story wasn't adding up. There were a number of inconsistencies in his account of what happened. Video surveillance, again, also threw his timeline off. Bryce claimed he picked Brittany up from Angel Park in Elko around 1.30. However, surveillance footage shows that he really picked her up close to two hours later at 3.22 p.m. Now, that pair of Apple earbuds was found nearby Brittany's body. They matched the pair she was wearing in a Snapchat message that she sent to one of her friends when she was hanging out with Dickie shortly before she was killed. Bryce Dickey initially denied having that sexual relationship with Brittany. However, we know they found a used condom near the tarp, near her tarp wrapped corpse, and that contained both Brittany and Bryce's DNA. That was the major breakthrough that ultimately led to Bryce's arrest. Now, Brittany's DNA profile was located on the exterior of that condom in Mr. Dickey's DNA profile was located on the interior of that condom, and that comes from the probable cause statement for his arrest. When the investigators confronted Bryce with this, he started to walk back his earlier statement saying, yes, yes, he had sex with Brittany the day she was killed. But Brittany's family and friends, however, insisted there was no previous sexual relationship between the pair and that Brittany was not interested in Bryce romantically. Her cause of death still has not been released. And officials at the Washoe County Regional Medical Examiner's Office were unable to confirm whether her autopsy was still pending as of Monday morning. A motive in the killing isn't currently known either. Alicia Yulaki, Brittany's mother, said, I'm really, really numb. We're hanging in there by our fingernails. The grieving mother said Bryce's arrest blew her away. The 18-year-old who she described as a shy cowboy kid was almost family. I trusted him impeccably, Alicia stated. The betrayal in this is unreal. Alicia said she never in a million years suspected Bryce. And she explained that she bought his story about the green Ford hook, line, and sinker Alicia said she even consoled her daughter's accused killer at a balloon launch memorial days before his arrest. The memory now makes her want to vomit. 
I grabbed his cheeks, and I tilted him toward me so that he was looking in my eyes, she recounted, for somebody who can sit there and betray a best friend like that, take her life, then go and celebrate her life with her family, go out looking for her. He is a psychopath. The morning self-described hippie mom also described Dickie as an evil son of a biatch. Bryce and Brittany met through a local rodeo group when they were in middle school. Brittany's family and friends attest that the pair's friendship was purely platonic. They never dated, they were never intimate, nor did they have any visible chemistry. In fact, Brittany's nickname for Bryce again was Big Brother. Brittany's best friend, Cheyenne Fry, who we heard a lot from in the last video, said that Brittany looked up to Bryce. And she went on to say that Brittany only spoke about good things when she talked about him. At least one time, Bryce supposedly admitted he had a crush on Brittany. Brittany reportedly turned him down, according to Cheyenne. Those close to Brittany also claimed that Bryce's high school friends had publicly bullied her in the months leading up to her killing. Spring Creek is a rural city about 400 miles north of Las Vegas, where news of Bryce Dickey's arrest quickly rippled through that city. Dickey was charged Monday with open murder with the use of a deadly weapon or, in the alternative, felony murder during sexual assault or attempted sexual assault with use of a deadly weapon. Friday, March 20th, was Bryce Dickey's first appearance at the Elko County Court, and he was assigned a public defender, and he remains in custody. As of Friday, no bail had been set in his case. The 18-year-old does not appear to have any prior criminal history. If the case proceeds to trial and prosecutors can prove that Brittany's killing was premeditated, Bryce Dickey could face the death penalty or life behind bars. Now, such a prospect pleases Brittany Ulaki's family. His mo her mother says, he belongs in prison. I hope one day the evil that lives in his soul faces him head on, she added. So that's where we are at this point in this case. And um, I advise you, if you this is the first time you're hearing of this, to watch the previous video on it, which I will put a link in the video description for you to easily access that, but it'll be in a playlist as well, because there's a lot about Brittany as a person and a lot that her friend Cheyenne said about her, you know, that is, that is very informative and lets you know the kind of person Brittany was and just how precious her life was that was taken from her far too soon. So we will be following this up. I thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, well, I shouldn't say liked. If you felt it was informative, I'd appreciate if you'd give it a thumbs up. That helps YouTube get it into the algorithms. And I would really appreciate that. I would appreciate if you would share the video if you feel that it's informative. And thanks so much. Please, again, if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so that you'll be advised every time we upload or go live. We'd love to have you as a member in our community. If you're not, we have the greatest community here on YouTube, the Ramblers. I think you'll really like it here. I know I do. and. I hope you guys are having a great evening to our community of Ramblers, and I hope that you're staying well, guys. 
Thank you for watching. God bless and be safe.